This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello, hello. Hi there. Yes, and if you haven't heard this week's Thespian talk already, then this is your first time hearing me on my new microphone. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. What did you got? Uh, I didn't even pay much attention to the brand. I've got this uh, Cyber Acoustics headset mic. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, my, it used to be my cousin's. She gave it to me, and she's like, I have no need for this, so here you go. And I tried it out, and it sounds pretty good. And when Holly and I recorded Thespian Talk yesterday, I, I, I four words in, and she's like, what the fuck? Holy shit. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> You sound so clean now. Yeah. Yes, a whole lot cleaner. I am so thankful for this. So <laughs> <coughs> now, if I could make now, if my body could get to a point to where I can laugh and not have to cough up things out of my lungs every now and then, we'll be happy, or, or at mm. least I will. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, this week we we have a uh, link from the New Civil Rights Movement dot com. This one was posted uh, last month, last May. Last month, last May. I guess that kind of is is the same. May fourth, two thousand fourteen, <laughs> by Jean and Jean and Esselink, and it's entitled "On Our Radar: Why I Really Don't Think You Were Born That Way." Yeah, so we're going to kind of talk about that, and if we have time, I, I predict think, regret. You predict you predict regret. <laughs> yeah, I, I predict that. At some point down the line, the the article writer is going to be like, uh, "Guys, I didn't actually mean that." Maybe. Yeah. Well, okay. And there was a or warning for that, too. Down on or she's going to double pretty... down on it. Yeah. Um, if you get a little further into the article, you, you get a clearer picture of the article writer's stance, but it um, the title is very much clickbait. <laughs> yes. And hey, look, we fell for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so it works. Uh, <laughs> clickbait the show. There we go. All right. No, it's not a typo. I mean every word about not being born that way. And while we're at it, let's add these complaints. I don't care what you do in private, but I don't want it in my face. I don't want my kids to have to see it on TV. I don't want teachers teaching it in public schools. I don't want you recruiting children to your lifestyle. I think there should be a law saying you can't speak about it in front of anyone who is under 18. I think you have too many pedophiles among you for it to be a natural occurrence. I think your lifestyle attracts them. I think it's unfair that you demand special privileges and protections no one else gets. I think children in your care are in danger. Oh, and I find your dress-up parades insulting and incredibly tacky. Now, before I go on, when you first saw this, before you saw the next sentence, who did you think that this article writer was talking about? Definitely sounds like they're talking about gay people. Mm-hmm. I really did too. I mean, I, I I feel bad that I actually got kind of worked up about this before reading further into the article, but I guess that's my own fault. Yeah, hey, I, I'd be guilty of it myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, this article writer is talking about Christians. Who else could I possibly mean? I'm talking to the lo- to the large number of Christian quote unquote leaders who have made it their earthly mission to make the lives of gay people miserable. And even the larger number, no, excuse me, and the even larger number of those I call not all Christians are like that believers who prop up these vindictive wolves in sheep's clothing with their donations and their butts in the pews. The kind of Christians who give loving and generous followers of Jesus a bad name. These are the, you know, the kind of people that my girlfriend will look at them and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yep. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, and and yes, folks. I am still trying not to cough up lungs over here, so I I'll catch as many as I can, but I some of them will make. How many lungs so. do you have, dude? Uh, <laughs> just the two, but who knows? That you can, know of? Yeah, two that I know of. <laughs> yeah. Although if I were to run a mile right now, it'd feel like I'd have twenty, and they would all be in pain. No. <laughs> well, I'm just that out of shape. Ouch. Okay, so. Judge Roy Moore, Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, is one of those cross-dressing wolves. Only only in his case, Slithering Tea Party Snake would be a better metaphor than Mary's Little Lamb. Hey, I didn't 
pick the Tea Party mascot, but if the scales fit, yeah. That you know, I don't normally, you know, you know, we we've talked about the Tea Party, we have talked about some of their members, mm-hmm. but I've never really stopped and thought, okay, you know what? They do use a snake, and the ones with that we see, the ones we see in power and pulling all the strings and everything, they are a bunch of snakes. Yeah. So it, it's more fitting than you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a pretty apt comparison. I mean, it it's like these guys just sort of slithered in out of nowhere and are just kind of making life miserable for those around them. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes succeeding. You know, more than what we would want them to. They need to go like, away. Just yes. like just like other snakes. Did I mention I'm an ophidiophobe? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yes. So everybody remembers Judge Moore as the as the Alabama Cranky Pants jurist who refused to remove a stone statue of the Ten Commandments from his courthouse even after the Supreme Court ordered him to. Most of you will also remember that last February, he sent a letter to all 50 governors urging them to support an amendment to the U.S. Constitution banning same-sex marriages. Judge Moore has made it his mission to put religion back in government and gays back in the closet. Keep in mind, these are not my words. They are the These are the words of the article. Mm-hmm. Uh, Judge Moore has had a long has long had a modus operandi best explained as the Westboro Baptist Church meets Fox News. Oh shit. <laughs> oh that's actually reassuring. Wow. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are two entities you never want combined, and they are combined in this one judge in Alabama. It's funny because they're actually like sort of opposed to one another too. Yeah. I mean I don't know if you've seen any of the uh, the, the interviews of WBC me- uh, family members on on Fox, but they really get into it because, I mean, say what you will about the WBC, they don't hold any prisoners. They they yeah, condemn everybody true. equally. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That's right. You're all going to hell. Yes, yeah. they're all going. We're going to have a massive part. We're gonna, just going to have parties all over in hell because, according to the Westboro Baptist Church, everybody who's going to be cool is going to be there anyway. I mean, we're going to be down there. We're going to have all the best bands down there. We're going to yeah. go over here and have a mosh pit, or we could go over here have 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 a furry orgy if we want to. We could go over here play canasta if we want to. Who cares? You know, we're just going to have this big ass party. There a lot of canasta players in hell. Maybe who knows? <laughs> well, you are in Florida, Gomer. You would know. Probably know quite a few people like that. Actually, up here in my part of Florida, it, the game is bingo. But <laughs> okay, but oh. The, Point is, huge goddamn party. Mm. A huge canasta party, up, apparently. Yes, <laughs> with, with mosh pits and orgies. <laughs> <laughs> now that's my type of canasta. There you go. <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I. I. I don't even know how to play canasta. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> what we'll learn, and we'll find some way to work. The mosh pit, you know. I'm willing to find out. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. Oh. Mosh pit turns into an orgy. There you go. That's the best kind of mosh pit. Uh, so to continue, he says something totally outlandish to draw press attention, and then when he's criticized for it, he complains his religion is under attack and calls himself a hero for withstanding it. You fucking coward. Yeah, dude, your your religion isn't under attack. Just you. People yeah. are just attacking you because you're an idiot. Yeah. Now, yeah, if he you're... was saying, I am under attack, then... Okay, when we can justify it just like Holly did. I don't know. I just think of so many people who, um, I've just heard stories of, of pastors, you know, Christian pastors who are all coming together, or not coming together, but are all preaching a message of, you know, love and tolerance and acceptance towards the gay community. And it's just like, well, if your religion is under attack, what, what about the religion of other people? The people yeah. who don't think you do, the, the way you do, yet still follow your same faith. It's just like, uh, I don't know. It's crazy. It's nuts. Yes. And he's a West Point grad. Oh. Maybe they teach that tactic there. Disseminate, disseminating religious propaganda 101. I usually try to avoid these war on religion traps, but this week Judge Moore has gone and pressed my cranky switch when he announced the First Amendment only protects Christian beliefs. <laughs> oh, that asshole. Yeah, uh... No, no, it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, as long as, I mean, do you do you have do you believe? Do you believe in the God, the Truth, the Way? 
I do not. Okay, well, then you don't get to say what you want, Gomer. Well, then, fuck you, I'm going to say it anyway. Well, you're just a stinky poop head, then. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. I will get you to cough up a lung at some point during this show. Yeah, probably. It's true. I am not a believer in gods, Christian or otherwise. But I am also not the Bill Maher variety of atheists who attack people who choose to believe. Actually, I think it's Bill Maher. If it gives you comfort, I have no need to talk you out of it. Just don't expect me to live as if your beliefs are reality. Because Judge Moore thinks there is a divine being who hates same-sex couples so much, he will burn them forever in a fiery pit does not make it so. And if it were so, why would anyone worship such a being? It seems like something we humans should band together to resist. Yeah, I I, I can yeah. get on board with that. Yeah, I, I I I don't really want to you know go out and be. I, I I try not to step on the toes of people who have faith because it's you know if it brings them them comfort and they don't hurt anyone based off it, then I don't really give a shit. But um, there's a line from uh, that Matthew McConaughey has in True Detective that's something to the effect of hey, if the only uh, get the only reason why uh, you're supposed to why a person is supposed to be good and righteous and you know nice to their neighbors and whatnot is because they live in fear of an all powerful omniscient uh, and judging God, then brother that person is a piece of shit. Yeah, I can definitely see that. It it's like if the only thing keeping you from doing you know from doing bad things in life is because your God tells you so. Then you're not doing your you're, you're not living your life right, and you're not yeah. using your religion right. Oh, and and I and I do agree. I mean, if you have your religion, fine. You know, keep keep your religion to yourself. That's all we ask. Is mm-hmm. just is you keep it over there. You believe what you want, but as soon as you try and shove it down my throat and tell me that I'm wrong for not believing in it, that's when we're going to have problems. Yeah. I also just remember um, there was a bit on, uh, I think the Young Turks posted a video about how <clears throat> Louis Gohmert, who's a congressman from Texas, yeah. was ta- talking about how, <clears throat> he was talking to a pastor, and he said, that, so uh, do, do you find it good, a, a great thing that you get to share people with people the good news about Jesus? Oh, yeah. We, in fact, we actually discussed this on Thespian Talk this week. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, and it wasn't just the good news about Jesus. It was the good news that if you're not Christian, you're going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> or that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that our faith can save people from going to hell. That's good news, right? And it's just like, well, uh, no, that that's that's not. Exa- I don't really necessarily believe that people who, you know, aren't Christian won't, you know, won't get to heaven. It's like, but, 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 I mean, that's not how it is, right? I mean, you're just, you're not really, you don't believe that, right? Yeah, and, and, or something to that effect. I don't fucking yeah, know. Yeah, and and of course the, the you know the separation of church and state issue was brought up in the whole thing, and Gomer just you know just said took that and put, placed it to the side, and then went on his merry little way because he apparently did not want to address that, even though it should be addressed and he should be corrected, because uh, again, as we've said on previous shows, church and state meant to be separate. Keep your religion out of politics, goddammit. Again, if it's your yes. own personal thing, that is fine. If that is your personal uh, uh, um, um, motivation to get into politics, that is fine. But do not use that as an excuse to try and bend people to your will in the name of your religion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Once, like, once you get, once once you you know attain public office, you need to start representing the public, not just the people who you consider members of your public. That's right. You know, and another thing, blue laws, cut them the fuck out. There's no, there is no secular reason why I shouldn't be able to get booze on Sunday. <laughs> it, it, it's all religious, so fuck them. Uh, this week, Judge Moore was asked about his, gay, his attack on gays by a reporter from Washington State's News Tribune. Here's what he smirked back. I'm just imagining, you know, having this cocky little smile. Like, <laughs> you fight battles for right and wrong. You never lose when you fight for the right. Sometimes the truth offends people. Well, the truth is, Judge Moore, uh, you're 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 a shitbag, and that offends me. So I, 
I, okay. I will give the you truth one is, truth. you're an asshole. Yes. <laughs> yes. And his assholeness offends me. <laughs> hmm. So, allow me to fight, for the, fight this battle for right, for freedom from religion, and for wrong, for being forced to live by Christian standards, without concern for offending Judge Roy Moore's Christian sensibilities. Because every complaint the judge has about gays, I have about Christians. Except, of course, I know Christians weren't born that way. They chose their peculiar religious orientation. I don't care what Christians do in private, but I don't want it in my face. I don't want kids to have to see religious messages on TV interspersed with ads for Barbie and Cheerios. And I especially don't want preschoolers to have to see images of a man being tortured on a cross in the marketplace. Keep it in your churches. I don't want teachers endorsing Christianity in public schools, or Islam, or Judaism. I don't want... I want schools to be neutral on the existence of a god. And let me just sort of that that's actually a really really good one because um this is like one of the the, the core arguments of um you know like the, the the religious crowd, you know, the religious right is that, you know, children aren't being allowed to pray in schools or they're not being allowed to open their bibles. It's like no, no, no. You can. You can bring a bible, you can bring a Quran, you can bring the Torah, you can bring a copy of Dianetics. And, you, you know, when you have time, you can do your prayer, you can read your, your religious text, you can do what you want to do. The schools can't publicly endorse any of those viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, know, you do it on your time. You have some of your time while you're at school. Do it then. If you, if you feel like that you can't do it at school on your time because of other things, then maybe sit down and question your... your uh, your your priorities with your religion and with yourself. If your friends are more important than your religion, so be it. But if you want your religion to be more important than your friends, then you need to act that way. You know? Yeah. You know, like if – like say you're Islamic and you're required to pray towards Mecca at, at noon every day, for example. You know, you talk – you know, you work it out to where you can do that. You know, right. For, for, uh, and you don't force other people to do it for you. You know, you 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 have to take the responsibility. Right. And if you have and if you have like some you know dietary law that forbids you from eating pork or, or beef or something, then talk to the school about that. And if they don't, you know, and if they're not willing to come to some sort of arrangement, then I don't think it's impossible to bring you know a, a lunch that's prepared for your religious. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing that I don't understand about a lot of evangelical Christians. Um, and, you know, specific types. So, you know, a lot of evangelical Baptists and whatnot, because, um, you know, everybody has encountered um, probably some interesting stuff with Jehovah's Witnesses in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. about how there are a lot of you know, activities they couldn't do in school because, you know, if you had some sort of holiday party, well, they can't participate because, you know, the only holidays they do are religious holidays. And yeah. that's it. Right. They don't even celebrate Christmas or, uh, yeah. So or their it was birthdays. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was like Thanksgiving. We were doing Thanksgiving things and, um, it involved, you know, when you think of Thanksgiving, you, you generally think of, puritan dress with the hat and you know black yeah. coat with a big white collar and buckle and all of that it's so basically and, the quaker oats man right <laughs> and i went to school with a girl who was jehovah's witness and she couldn't participate in that activity and you know they just gave her different colored construction paper and she made a, a dude just like everybody else it was just hers was different colored yeah so it didn't infringe on her religious beliefs. So it's amazing to me that there are so many people out there who don't get that, you know, your decision to go to public school doesn't mean that um, they have to accommodate your every whim when it comes to following your religion. That, you know, they can make accommodations for you, certainly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't mean that everybody else has to pray. That doesn't mean that everybody else has to only partake in certain activities because you are religious. 
Exactly. You know, and it makes me think of Kansas and um, teaching intelligent design. Oh. Fire you know, design. they, it's like they don't get that, yeah, you're religious and that's okay, but that doesn't mean that that's what we should be teaching everybody in public schools. Exactly. Oh, so to, to continue on here. I don't want Christians recruiting children to their unhealthy lifestyle by terrifying naughty toddlers with threats of hell. That escalates quickly, by the way. <laughs> I think there should be a law saying you can't speak about religion in front of anyone who is under 18, when impressionable youth are old enough to sort out fact from fiction and are not completely trusting of the person feeding them religious doctrine disguised as truth. That particular one, I'm a little on the fence on because, yeah, you've... You know, growing up, you should learn about the different religions of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that way when you are old enough and when you can, you know, when you start making your own decisions, that is one you can make a more informed decision about to follow one or none of them even. I and, remember when I was a kid, I was super invested in Greek mythology to the point where I actually started believing in it. There you go. So... Uh, uh, I just have to bring this up, but I was on Facebook the other day and I saw something about if you're ever feeling lazy, just consider that the Greeks thought their gods lived on a giant hill and nobody decided to go up and check. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, that is a very good point. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But, I mean, to sort of continue on from that, I, I was never raised with any specific religious uh, background. I, I was never told by my parents, you know, this is what it is one way or the other. I, was, I mean, because both of my parents were lapsed Catholics. They came from, you know, different families who were both fairly religious. My father's, I think, a little more so. But, um, you know, they left the faith, and then they met each other, and they had me. And my mom, in particular, never told me that when, whenever I would proclaim this, it's like, oh, well, God exists. She'd be like, well, are you sure God exists? Then I'd say, like, okay, God doesn't exist. And she'd say, are you sure God doesn't exist? Yeah. <laughs> and it was that sort of um, way of just... And then I remember at one point specifically asking her, there are a lot of religions. That, do you know which one's the right one? She says, no. Nobody knows. And I don't think anybody who says they do really does. Yeah. They're and that's... Taking it on whatever faith they happen to have. And, yeah. And that's the whole thing behind religion is faith. Because you don't know for sure. It's all about belief. And yeah. for somebody like me who labels himself as an agnostic atheist, I don't believe because I don't know. I don't have all of the evidence there. And the Bible has been proven over and over and over and over again that it's not necessarily the best source of uh, – um, I don't know. No. It's not the greatest history book on what was happening around that time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a word I was looking for, but it just kind of just escaped me. If you find the word, please send it to me, and I will make sure I actually feed it this time. Uh, so, uh, I think Catholics have too many pedophiles among their clergy for it to be a natural occurrence. They have too many pedophiles among their clergy, period. Yeah. Even one is too many. Yes. Yeah. I think the religious lifestyle, lifestyle attracts sexual predators. That's an awkwardly phrased one. <laughs> um. <laughs> I can understand, though, because, you know, part of, a, a big part of, for a lot of people, of being religious is that, you know, sin happens. And yes, you should endeavor not to, but if you do, it's okay because you're forgiven. Yeah, you have your religion to fall back on, so it's just like, I, I can just imagine what's it's going It's okay through. to be a flawed human being because Jesus well, was crucified and now my sins are already taken care of. Yeah, which that, that gets into a whole mess of beans too because it's like, well, wait, so if, if I go out and murder like five children, my sins will be forgiven? Uh, oh, no. You know there are nutballs that are going to try and justify it that way. Well, especially when you see members of the clergy doing something this horrible. Yeah. I mean, that's what's the worst. That's the worst thing about you know the, this whole me messy scan, you know, bloody scandal is just the fact that it was members of the clergy, people who these kids are supposed to be looking up to, people who all members of the faith are supposed to be looking up to for guidance and for spiritual help, are molesting the children that were entrusted to their care. 
and they're doing it seemingly because they have the mindset of, well, I'm Catholic, so all I have to do is just make a confession to the right people, and I'm good. Yeah, that that's not the way to go. And, and of course, this last sentence on this paragraph, I think parents are guilty of neglect when they assume their children are safe with Christian clergy. I can... I don't know if I would call it neglect. I would definitely say a little... Well, maybe maybe neglect. But, uh, but well, if your entire assume. reason for trusting somebody is that because they're religious, yeah, you know, then mm-hmm. I start to see it because, you know, right, it's just an iffy, you know. Here's the one thing I know about you, so you're trustworthy. Yeah, yeah, it's like, exactly. It's like, it's like, oh, you're a Baptist. Okay, I trust you with everything. Here, here, here is my child. Here is my bank account number. I'm sure you will not do a damn thing with them. Two days later, you find that the child is missing, and, and your bank account is cleared out. That's how that's how it could get. Uh, and and now there are a bunch of people who are listening that might be paranoid. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. That is that is a more extreme example. But that's how I roll. I think churches yes. should be taxed. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, what do they do? They just put the money back into themselves. And they get they have all of these tax breaks. Okay, they some of them do give to charity, and the the money that they do give to charities or help out poor people or whatever, you know, the stuff that they spend on that, sure, tax deductible, fine. Yeah, you, know? you should be able to write that off if you're you know giving money to charity and you're helping people in need. But if you're just you know gathering money and then funneling it back into your own pockets, mm-hmm. then you get I've... taxed to hell and back. Yeah, nope. that's how it goes. Yeah. It's just like yeah. any other corporation is, just like any other business. You know, it's just, just, especially those that want to play in politics. I think it's unfair that Christians demand special privileges and protections no one else gets. See lo- Hobby Lobby. I think no group should ever be legally entitled to victimize another group with a religious yeah. bigotry excuse. And the dog agrees with us. Yes, yes, she does. <laughs> yes, because. This is something that has been pissing me off over the past couple of years, and and we've seen it in the news. We've probably reported on it a couple of times on these shows, and people would bully people, you know, like, like Christians would bully gay people and say, "Well, it's 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 in our religion, you know, religious religious freedom." It's like, no, your religious freedom ends when it starts violating the rights of somebody else. Yeah. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if your it doesn't matter if your deity says you should be throwing rocks at puppies. You don't throw rocks at puppies. You don't no. do that. No, there are just certain. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> there are just certain lines of decency that even if you say you that you you have a religious reason for it, that just it doesn't really matter in polite society because I mean you. you you don't. I mean, if if, if the only thing I, I've seen so many uh, articles that have posted on this website, notalwaysright.com, which is basically really terrible customers giving you know people in customer service hell, mm-hmm. and there's a bunch of stories that that all deal with these people who are like really really nice to their checkout you know cashier or whatever, just chatting up chatting them up, and then as soon as they 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 hear, they hear the person say, oh I actually am gay. Their attitude just shifts 180 degrees, and it's just fire and brimstone and vitriol, and you're going to hell. It's like, wow. I've seen those. Uh... You're, 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 how, how Christian of you? Yeah, very mm-hmm. Christian. Yeah, it, it makes me makes me want to ignore some of – yeah. They, and again, the dog thank is you, agreeing. Thank you, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> it makes me want to ignore my 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 whole uh, you know the whole idea of you know not slapping people in the face for saying something stupid because that's more you know that's kind of impolite at the very least and it could actually result in assault charges at the worst but uh I, I, you know, that that type of thing makes me want to ignore that at times i i yeah. I, I, I keep ignore i i keep you know i, I don't do it obviously but it, it's you know, but goddamn if i don't want to Aye. The thing about Hobby Lobby that really annoys me is that, you know, yeah, it's one thing to have religious beliefs and be a business, but you are still a business. 
Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't be getting any special breaks because of your religious beliefs. That's right. So it's like, okay, you you running the thing, you pay your employees fairly, and I do mean fairly, and you give them all the benefits that they are legally entitled to. And if that happens to include birth control or abortion care, then you give that to them. You you give them money towards that. You know, and and I don't think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to medical care, it's supposed to just cover all of it, and it doesn't matter what the procedure is. You have that insurance there. If I uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Well, I mean, it depends on the insurance company, but you know, the the things like birth control, it's like, well, you know, now the president has signed into law, and you know, this actually happened a couple of years ago, that there are no copays on birth control. Right. And Hobby Lobby is like, well, we have a problem with that. We don't think that our employees should be using birth control. And so they want to not give health insurance because... Because they're a bunch of dicks. Yeah. Yeah. So to that, I would ask, okay, are they popping birth control pills like candy on the job? Is it a detriment to their work? If the answer is no, then it's not your business. Yeah. It's, uh, your business like, is selling crafts. Yes. And, and crafting but, items. That's your business. There, but our business is also knowing what business our other employees are up to. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there is a certain – you know, when you're working with a business, of course, there's going to be a certain amount of, of no's in your employee's business, but only in the professional sense. Like you don't like you want to make sure your employees are not taking time off to go smoke a cigarette when they're not supposed to, or going off to the john and shooting up heroin. You want to make sure that stuff is out of your workplace. That's understandable. Once they leave your workplace, that you know whatever they do, you just let them be. If they get caught doing something illegal, then, then then you know that's on them. You know you just say hey you know what. We, we just provide them a place to work. We have no control over them outside of the business. And, of course, there's also the representation angle as well. If you don't want that person representing your company, then, well, you do what you have to do there. Uh, that's one of those sticky web thingies. And, ah. Yeah. Oh. So to continue. Oh, and I almost forgot. I find the Catholic dress-up parades around abortion clinics, abortion clinics insulting and incredibly tacky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At first I was like, "What?" And then there's a picture attached where there are actually people dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I guess I didn't realize that actually happened." Yeah, because I... it, it's weird. Like, why would you dress up like that? I mean, okay, you're going, you're going, and, and you're you're sitting there and you're protesting because you think abortion should never happen. Okay, that's your opinion. You're protesting. It's your right to protest, but you look silly. Yeah. <laughs> you you just look silly. kind of weird. Oh. I had no idea that the Catholics actually did that. I knew that there was a lot of protests that go on at abortion clinics and Planned Parenthood, but that's a new one. Yeah. Oh. Every argument Judge Moore and his Christian warriors make to the buttress to buttress their resistance to gays, I feel myself. Only I feel it about Christians. The difference is, I don't imagine my contempt for religion should disallow Judge Moore and the Christians of the world the freedom to practice their faith. It is the judge and his Christian soldiers who think their belief should keep gay people and pregnant women from the pursuit of happiness. Sometimes the truth offends people, says Judge Moore. I would remind the judge that religion is not truth. However, in the hands of people like Judge Moore, religion can be, indeed be offensive. That is why today, Judge Roy Moore and those who share his repugnant brand of forced Christianity are on our radar. <sighs> and mic drop. Yes. <laughs> that that yeah. is the sound of a mic dropping there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and you know what? You, when you get down to it, overall, I, I, can, I can definitely agree with him. <laughs> overall. Because it's like, yeah... As we as we've said, we keep reiterating. You know, you have your faith, fine. Keep it over there. Don't try and force it on me. And if you're a politician and you have a personal faith, fine. Don't try and write these shit into law. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a reason yeah. why 
we only we don't study the Bible in school unless it's a particular class around religion. Because you know, there's yeah. there's a reason why we don't have laws like you know wearing two different types of cloth or, or, or fabric or whatever is illegal, or shaving is illegal. There's a reason for all of that. It's because that's that's it's stupid. For yeah. one thing. <laughs> And well, have you seen this? Hmm? Go ahead. Have you seen the picture of the tattoo of uh, this guy who has a tattoo on his arm? It's of like Leviticus, whatever it is. The passage that <clears throat> allegedly, you know, prohibits people from having homosexual relations, and uh, it says like, not uh, the caption says, like, uh, the cost of a tattoo of Leviticus, a hundred dollars. Not knowing that Leviticus also bans tattoos. Yeah, I was going to yes. say. Um... <laughs> Pretty sure you're not supposed to get tattoos, so why would you? Yeah. Oh, no, let's get tattoos. And a friend of my, I, I posted that on I posted that on my Facebook a while back, and a friend of mine actually said nothing says I'm gay and I hate myself quite like getting a Leviticus tattoo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, that's sad for the person who actually feels that way, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God, so. So yeah, that is, that is that is the whole thing. Again, if you want to find it and read it for yourself, there are some links in there that go to some other news stories. Uh, just go to the new civil rights movement dot com and just look up on our radar why I really don't think you were born that way. Uh, you can check it out for yourself. See see all the other links that he's got there, and check out some of the other stuff on the site as well. Uh, and, but, yeah, the title is a bit clickbaity. I think I think you kind of hit the nail on the head, Gomer. But I think that it's this is the the best kind of clickbait because it like gets you all riled up, but then you actually like realize like wait a minute, okay, this this actually has a bit more of a a point than just what I this is different than what I thought it was going to be. And it has more of a point than I thought it was going to address. Yeah, yeah. And there is one one th- final thing that I just sort of like to slip in before I forget because it is sort of on this topic, and um, it's a line from the play that I'm actually directing here in Homer. Um, and it's it revolves around a discussion about Jesus and about Christianity, and I'm not going to I don't want to really spoil anything, but um, <clears throat> they're, they're talking about it. And they're saying like, well, what would Jesus say to you know if he was present? Uh, and the main character says, believe in what he tried to teach without rigmarole. Piety piety is not what the lessons bring to people; it's the mistake they bring to the lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds like a good thing. And that, that to me is what people should really consider when they take their faith when they when they when they either take a faith or take their faith into consideration. It's just like, you know, what is the real message going on here? What should I be how how should I approach my fellow man with my religion? Yeah. And if that approach is shove it in your face and make everybody believe legally, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and speaking of doing it wrong, I, I do have a backup link because we got we got 20 minutes. I'm not ending the show this early. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, so there's a link that I've got on here from townhall.com. And it was posted, again, posted back in May, almost a month ago to the day. Uh, in fact, by the time the day this goes up, it'll be uh, one month tomorrow. Uh, and it's called How Liberalism Violates All Ten Commandments. This I have got to see. Well... Uh, Townhall.com, yeah. It's yeah. gotta be funny. This this is gonna be fun. Just just <laughs> Oh, and my lungs seem to be getting better. I actually had a little bit of a chuckle and a lung didn't try and come up. Woo-hoo. So so I'm getting better, yay! Alright. Yay. Alright, so All right. I, so the art the author of this article is uh, Matt Barber, for those who might actually want to know. And it reads One of my readers, we'll call him Moses, is the publisher of a mainstream newspaper in California. He wrote me the other day with an insightful observation. Since Moses works in one of the most liberal industries in one of the most liberal states in the Union, I won't divulge his real name. We don't want Moses tarred, feathered, and banished Oklahoma with a scarlet C for Christian emblazoned on his Harris Tweed sport coat. Uh, And he also notes that he has no antipathy toward toward neither Oklahoma since he once lived there, nor Harris Tweed, though I do recommend going against wearing Harris Tweed in Oklahoma, especially in the summer. Okay. Okay, so, Matt, think about this, he wrote, Moses wrote, every one of the Ten Commandments is explicitly violated by a principle of the left. 
And so I thought about it. And you know what? Slap me with a Red River catfish if Moses ain't exactly right. Oh. Wow. That sounds like something straight out of Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yeah. Slap me with a Red River catfish if Moses ain't exactly right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to be sure, oh. as individuals, we've all violated many, if not most or all, of the Ten Commandments. In our fallen... Okay, who, who are you? And what have you, what exactly have you violated? Which ones have you violated? I wonder. We've all, I mean, many of us have violated many, if not all, of the Ten Commandments. You know what? I've never killed anybody. Yeah, I have Neither. also yet to kill anyone. So. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, A lot yeah, of the others, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's there's one pretty glaring one right there that I'm like, no, I, I definitely didn't kill anyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In our fallen, sinful state, we have an inherent propensity to rebel against God's perfect and holy will for our lives, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, from Romans 3.23. Thank God for making an available path, narrow as it is, for eternal redemption and salvation through Christ Jesus. Oh, Jeebus. Jeebus. <laughs> Still, there is a difference between individual sins and a philosophical worldview that embraces those sins as a matter of course. Modern liberalism, progressivism, leftism, secularism, pick your poison, is built upon by and for it for sin itself. Liberalism that's, that's, guys, that's right, guys. It's built for sin. Yes. So that's the entire goal of the liberal party. Yes. Sin. Sin, sin is good. It Ooh. tastes like ice cream and cookies. Sin is delicious. Yes. <laughs> Why it's so tempting. Very much so. Liberalism's entire fabric is constructed by precept pl by precept planks, precept planks that are soaked through and stained by a man's arrogant rebellion against our Creator God. In sum, liberalism is folly. It represents man's futile attempt to disorder God's natural order. It is the unholy brainchild of God's very first enemy, given by that enemy to God's favored creation, us, with the sole purpose of destroying that creation. We're pretty much doing okay fucking things up on our own. We don't need any supernatural beings or supernatural yeah. excuses. We, we're doing that well enough on our own. Uh, unfortunately, we're yeah. all too happy to help. Liberalism just formalizes the process, making sin public policy. Oh. I get back to that. I don't know. Volumes could be pinned on the myriad ways in which the central tenets of liberalism violate each of the Ten Commandments, following as a much truncated analysis. So it's not going to go on forever, thankfully. So <laughs> let's see. The first, the first commandment, of course, is thou shalt not have, thou shalt have no gods before me. His reasoning. At worst, liberalism denies the very existence of God in the forms of atheism and secularism, while, at best, it adopts the wonderfully, quote-unquote, inclusive blasphemy called religious pluralism. Pluralism presumes to give false gods of false religions equal footing and denies Christ as he defined himself. For I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Liberal Christianity falls under this category. It's pluralism with a Christian stamp. Secular humanism, liberalism's prevailing false religion, denies God altogether and crowns man as king over himself and the measure of all things. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. You know what? I'm, I'm actually I'm actually on board with the eat, eat drink, and be merry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've I got board. no problem with that. Hell yeah. Eat, drink, be merry. I'd be even more merry if I could get up to Chicago, but that's a whole different kind of merry. Uh. Yeah, if, I, if I could make it down to MAGFest with, with you guys, that would make me merry. That damn straight. I, I'm already working on trying to save up. <laughs> I start early. Or at least as early as I am able. Okay. But, uh, yeah, thou shalt have no gods before me. Well, there are liberals out there who are Christian and who follow this commandment. They just have the sense, again, as we've stated earlier, to keep it to themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number two, thou shalt not make graven images. We're talking idolatry, idolatry here. Liberalism is built on it. First, there's literal idolatry, the worship of man-made idols, animals, or inanimate objects enjoyed by our New Age friends. And then there's everything else. Pantheistic environmentalism, idols of reproductive freedom, sexual liberation, and equality. <laughs> wow. Not idol! Really? He's, the idol he's... of reproductive freedom. <laughs> oh, God! I'm 
talking basically about so. pantheistic environmentalism. Oh well, yeah. Um, but okay, if you care about God's creation, then shouldn't you care about environmentalism? You would. Think- yeah. Wouldn't you want to protect what God has given us so, you know, wonderfully, so, you know, selfless, I mean, okay, obviously not selflessly, because, you know, that that's up for, open for interpretation, but, I mean, he gave us this, he gave us paradise in the middle of a float, you know, black void. Shouldn't we, yeah, shouldn't we want to protect that? Yeah. I think, well, I'm just... I'm just thinking that, okay, I can see where they can get the reproductive freedom. Anybody who's ever watched a porn can understand where they could get the reproductive freedom idol from. Yeah. Or, or, or not even, doesn't even have to be porn. It could just be something like American Pie. Because I'm sure, you know, hey. Oh, and speaking, speaking of which, they go to number three Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. To deny God is to take the Lord's name in vain. What? Okay, Christians of the world. We, we seem to have a big problem on this one. I want to fill you in on a little something. Mm-hmm. God's name is not God. <laughs> that is a descriptive word. If you've ever read the Bible, and if you're a Christian, please do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you would know, and if you've ever studied religion, you also know this, that the name of God is actually unpronounceable. Yes. And, you know, that's where Jehovah, Jehovah and Yahweh come from because it's the closest translation that we can get. So, sure, if you're saying those things, um, you know, I can see a little bit more of a problem with taking the Lord's name in vain. But if you're just saying, don't say God, um, that's that's not actually God's name. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's, it's a little silly. If you it's want to keep yourself just from doing it, just a description of who it is. Yeah. If you want to keep yeah. yourself from doing it, that's fine. Sure. Okay. But uh, don't don't try and censor the rest of our vocabulary, please. You know, we we you know we like our vocabulary the way it is. And I'm just thinking, denying God is to take the Lord's name in vain. I deny God. Well, you took his name in vain. No, I didn't. I, you could take his name in vain. Growing up, that always meant things like "oh god damn it" or or, mm-hmm. or things like that, or "oh my god," right. you know. And or, that just—I uh. don't know. I was just also thinking if uh, the Monty Python version is correct, just simply saying his name is blasphemy. Yeah, it's like "oh god," "oh I just blasphemed," "oh my god," "oh I did it again." <laughs> that piece of halibut was good enough for Jehovah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Number four, to keep, remember to keep holy the Sabbath. This one is a bit tricky as it is widely understood to fall under the Jewish ceremonial law and not the moral law, the old covenant, not the new. Christ himself healed, worked on the Sabbath. That said, many Christians still view Sunday as the Sabbath and do indeed keep it holy. Not all liberals, there are certainly are liberal Jews, but liberalism at large denies the Sabbath any significance whatsoever, much less a holy significance. That's, that's stretching. That, that is, is a little stretchy. bit. And, yeah. And of course, there's also, see, see, growing up, again, one thing that I have understood growing up is that if you have to work on Sunday, you have to work on Sunday. Because guess what? God, as I knew him at the time, understood. He's like, hey, yeah. you, 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 you know, you can't do that. You know, he understands things that, that have to happen. Yeah, yeah you well, need money. as somebody who studied religion, this is another one of those things that really bothers me. Mm-hmm. The whole purpose of the New Testament is to inform the Old Testament. Yeah. And so you know how to interpret all of what that says. Yes. So if Christ worked on the Sabbath, that means it is okay for you to work on the Sabbath. <laughs> yes. It says, remember the Sabbath. That doesn't mean sit around and be a couch potato on the Sabbath. Yeah. You know, you can, you you know, and, and technically people work on, on the Sabbath anyway. Hi, you go to church? Those people that are doing the stuff back there, they're working. Yep. Oh, my yeah, God. But they're doing God's work, so it's not the same. Well, they they could claim that about anything. Oh, yeah. you know, they they could claim, you know, what what are you working on Sunday for at this Walmart? I'm doing God's work. 
I don't know how, but I Hobby am. Lobby doesn't work on Sunday. Neither does They're Chick-fil-A. all about being religious, so... Neither does yeah. Chick-fil-A. Not, not that I think that you should take Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby as how you should behave no, in... No, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. You know, pretty much anything. Um, but I'm saying that if that's how people... If you feel like that you can't work because of whatever, then, you know, here are some examples and, you know, having thus having church on Sunday, you might want to reconsider that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and again, if you're in a position to where you can write your own schedule and you want to take a day as the Sabbath or, or Sunday as the Sabbath, fine. But just because everybody else doesn't, doesn't make us all bad people. Yep. We are fine. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> Liberalism seeks to supplant parents with progressive government. It diminishes parental rights and encourages children to rebel against the antiquated conventions held by mom and dad. It denies that children even need a mother and father and bristles at the heteronormative lack of gender neutrality inherent within the very words mother and father. This sin-centered, counter-biblical notion of gay marriage desecrates God's design for true marriage and family and is intended to undermine these cornerstone institutions. Because there is no other way to honor your parents, right? Oh no! I mean, there, there, you couldn't possibly just help them out around the house, or you know, help make dinner for them every once in a while, or give them a call to tell them that you love them, or send them an email, or something, or do something nice on their birthday, or Mother's and Father's Day, or Christmas, or anything. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It does not. <laughs> Parental rights. As far as I am aware, unless you fuck up royally, they are at least similar, if not the same, as they always been. They always have been. I mean, you can't you obviously you can't abuse them. You can't do this and that with them. And if you if you try and chunk one out the window across the street, you're going to go to jail, and your child's going to be taken away from you. That's you know, that that's just normal. And if your child, if you are a child, if you're a parent and your child has this attitude problem towards you, then you need to sit down, figure out, okay, when, when, what, what is my reaction to this, and try and fix it. You know, if yeah. you're a parent and, and your child is continually, say, lying to you or otherwise being a little bastard to you, and you come at them with only anger and, 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 and possibly spanking them, then there, there may be something to that. I right. say in a, I, I say in this particular house. <laughs> ah. Right, and I mean just the idea that that also you should always be required to honor your 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 parents. I'm not saying that you know you should always you should be on your guard, but I mean if if your parents give you no reason to honor them, then you should be under no obligation to do that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean if if you're living in an abusive household where your mother and your father are either not doing anything or actively harming you then get the fuck out of there and never look back. Exactly. Find a way out of there. Go to relatives. Go to friends. Just get out of the situation. Yeah. <sighs> Number six. Thou shalt not murder. Oh! Mm-hmm. And we and we can see exactly where this is going to come in. Oh, yeah. Yes. Abortion, euthanasia, pro-choice, reproductive rights, death with dignity. Need I say more? Sacrosanct is the liberal rite of passage for a feminist mother to slaughter her own child in the womb. What? Abortion is a rite of passage. What? Yeah, I don't think they know what that phrase means. No. It's like, it's like what? Girl turns 18, she has to get pregnant and then abort the baby in two months? No. I just, no. Number one, that's kind of horrible. And number two... That would be hell of the uterus. It'd be like, yeah, turn eighteen, we'll get you pregnant, then we'll we'll do the things, and if we botch it up, well, sorry about your uterus, you won't be able to have any more kids. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I just love how they slip reproductive rights in there too. Yeah, because but... choosing when to have a child is murder, apparently. Yeah, you let all those those uh, those eggs go unfertilized. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's 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 your fault, right? That's murder. That's Wrong. murder. You murdered that egg. 
And even so, though by itself it wouldn't become a person. No, you have yeah, that egg. you and, have murdered it. And that's not counting the millions upon millions upon billions upon trillions of sperm that are just shot out into the mid into the air and left to die. Well, like, like guys I, masturbating. Hello, you shouldn't be masturbating. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, well, if I they're mean, going to concentrate on if they're going to concentrate on rich productive rights, they need to concentrate on both sides. Yeah. So you know, just just gotta try and keep it on both sides here. Uh, mm -hmm. number seven: Thou shalt not commit adultery. We're all fucked. <laughs> this means all sexual immorality as divined in the scriptures to include marital infidelity, fornication, homosexuality, bestiality, incest. Okay. I, Let's see. I'm married. Well. <laughs> um, well, well, but I have fornicated. Yeah. So, yeah. Apparently, um, that is considered committing adultery, despite the fact that I have not been married. Because that makes sense, guys. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just, I love how they put bestiality and incest in here. It's like... Like, uh, those things are, are are considered okay to liberals. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, sorry. You First know. of all, no, they're not. And second of all, um, you know, there are actually a lot of good reasons why they're not okay for anyone at all, ever. Yeah. I mean, oh, reality, yeah. you, you, you I, I, keep, keep in mind, going in with imagination here, I mean, certain parts on certain animals, they could probably do damage to your to your junk. If they oh, yeah. if they if they don't kick you in the balls away from them in the first place, I just remember there was like this one this one woman who actually had an, a severe allergic reaction and then died after having sex with a dog. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. Ooh. Just that is the that is not a way you want to go out, ladies and gentlemen. No, and how, what kind of legacy is that to leave your kids? Because she was a mother and she oh, left behind two kids. <laughs> And how horrible are those kids' lives going to be? How'd your mom die? She got... The dog? Yeah, she fucked the dog. <laughs> and, and, oh. Oh, God. No, uh, no, thank at, you. At that point, it's just better to be like, she was killed by a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just gotta say that. <laughs> like, it, it, uh, children who had this happen to you, um, it is okay for you to lie about that for the rest of your life. Yes. I am yeah. totally okay with that. <laughs> Your, your, your sanity is not worth the truth. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, number eight, thou shalt not steal. With class warfare as its fuel, liberalism embraces the redistributionist philosophies of Marx and Engels. I think I said that right. Liberalism thrives on theft. Really? Like some completely incompetent and inefficient Robin Hood, liberal government steals from the middle class to give to the poor. No, they don't! No, they fucking don't! We... Okay, let me let me tell you this. What what any kind of liberal economist would want out of this at this point, I'm going to guess, would be for the one percent to pay their fucking share. Stop yes. putting all the goddamn money, put it back into the fucking economy, and so people can actually make a decent living, and maybe just maybe our economy will recover. Yeah, well, that's all we want. This and this is just one of those things that's baffling to me, you know. Tax breaks for the rich. Why? Why? Be because they end up paying more money? That, that right, it's more money, but if it's percentage based, it's still the same amount comparatively. Yes. So just because it's a bigger dollar amount doesn't mean that it's actually worth more. Exactly. That was yeah. in quotation marks, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witnesses. And you did that in number eight. Yeah, holy crap. You did that in number eight. Yeah. So, so but, but to, to be fair, we're going to read part of it. I'll give you Saul Elinsky from his Rules for Radicals. The third rule of ethics of means and ends is that in war, the end justifies almost any means. As we've learned from Barack, you can keep your insurance, Obama. That includes lying. Okay. Where where has any place said that, you know, because of Obamacare, you are not allowed to keep your insurance? If 
from what I understand, if insurance companies are dropping people because of Obamacare, that's not because of him. That's because the insurance companies are greedy fucks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, Obama said, yeah, you can keep your insurance. But then companies were just like, well, I don't like any of this. So no, I, we're just we have to cut people from our insurance now. Yeah. So yeah. that's not on the president. That's on the insurance companies. And, oh, liberals lie. And what, conservatives don't? Again, I point you back to number eight. Well, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I can point out any number of, any instance of deception that came from the, you know, the conservative right in this, this yeah. country, but it's not even worth it. Yeah. Last one, number ten, thou shalt not covet. And then thou shalt not have an economy. <laughs> because I think, I don't remember who it was, might have been George Carlin, might have been somebody else, but let's say I walk down the road and I'm just playing my 3DS while walking down the road. I'm in a small town, I could do that safely. And somebody's like, hey, where'd you get that 3DS? I want one like that. I tell them where to go, they go and buy it. Now you are going to have people that will outright try and steal it from my hands, like some little punks did when I was living in Indy. But, you know, those, from what I've noticed, are few and far between, at least when it, com when it comes to the amount of people that are on this planet. So yeah. coveting something is not a bad thing. That means you want it. It gives you a goal to work for, and you go after it. Yeah, I mean, like, one of my friends uh, that I'm um, uh, roommates with, is has been saving like all of his money to get a black magic cinema camera so that we can you know do some you know some great you know some fun stuff with it but according to, to this according to this just this, just this commandment he's going to hell for that and yeah. that sucks because i i would like that kind of camera too yeah and you know, and you know what even even if you want to go with with, with like in a more personal or sexual sense because I know this is one of those things that they cover in the Bible as well you know you yeah. shall not cover your covet your neighbor your neighbor's ass or anything like that <laughs> and, and I, I know how silly that phrasing is but it's in there yeah but um, but it's like okay yeah I could look at somebody and say okay I want her I want her sexually guess what that in and of itself was okay, as, especially as long as you understand your boundaries and don't go try and do it like some MRA douche bro. Yeah. So there you go. Coveting yeah. is not a bad thing in and of itself. It's what you do about it. Yes. That makes it bad. So that is, that is that is those ten. There's a little bit more in the article. If you really want to have a look at it and have your blood boil, go to townhall.com, how liberalism violates all ten commandments. You can have your blood boil, or you might get a laugh out of it. I don't know. But go and check it out. We are out of time for this week, so we're <laughs> going to get out of here. Uh, if we wanted to find Gonzo Link, where could we find him? You can find me on YouTube, on Twitter, and Tumblr at Gonzo Link. Uh, you can also find me on the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne, and I also have a podcast, Focus on the Frames. It's a podcast about movies that's hosted by myself and Zenith Will Rule, which can be found on his YouTube channel at Zenith Will Review. Yay! And where can we find Holly Christine? You can find me all over various social media as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can find my Facebook fan page at Holly Christine Brown, and you can find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet! And if you wanted to find me on social media, I am on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. You can find my stuff on RTGomer.com and Nerdvice.com. And if you like these shows and you want to help support the shows from here on out, you can just head on over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. All of the info is there for you to help make a decision whether or not you want to support or maybe support more if you already are if you want that's fine you can even set your own limits if you don't want to go over your budgets or what have you that's great as well again all of that is over there patreon.com slash gomer to one double x and if you're watching this on youtube then you are seeing the lovely title card art by my amazing girlfriend becky hopkins and she has her own patreon as well patreon.com slash becky hop go over there throw some money at her you'll get some art back and if you throw enough money at her she'll even do a qu cool little 30 second animation for you by the way award-winning animator go check her out go throw money at her she will very much appreciate it 
Oh, so that is it for this week. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.